I was on mute, darn it. Anyway, let me start over. So welcome back, everybody. Um, starting off with uh, Chief T here, who looks like a new fan, stating the obvious here. So thank you for that, Chief T. Uh, Daryl Rubin said, you should probably point out to people that YTSL is far better than TSLY for long-term holds as it captures more of Tesla's growth during rallies while paying a smaller, more consistent dividend. Well, <clears throat> let's look that one up. YTSL. I mean, only 90% confident about it, but it sure seems better to me. Well, 90% uh, confidence. I mean, you'd go to the casino with those odds, right? That's pretty good. So let's see. YTSL. What dividend does it pay? Is this it here? Uh, YTSL.ne. Now, what the heck is that? I had like 12 of you on. Now I have like six. It's like fluctuating. Anyway. Um, okay, it's not showing a dividend, but since, let's see. Oh, since May or April 26th, we're up 56% in this one. That's solid. How long has this one been around? Um, <clears throat> wow, 59% since April 26th. That's phenomenal. What dividend does it pay? I guess I can go to Yahoo Finance. Oh, I'm back to 11 now. That's weird. The number fluctuated. Anyway, um, let's see here. Sam Talks Finance. I'm holding and adding TSLY every week, but also Tesla. Yeah, I should have gotten some Tesla stock when it was 165 you can't beat that growth and then the others, the other thick dividend. Yep. And then I said, give me a few minutes. Damon Rydell says YTSL. Is that Canadian? Um, it's got kind of a weird, like two letters behind it. So let's see. It's YTSL.ne, like New England or Nebraska. It's got like the letter NE. Not sure what that is, but um, What's the website? I guess I can Google it because I know you all have a hard time putting links in the StreamYard for whatever reason. I know it's it's um, cumbersome. But yeah, okay, so it is Canadian. All right. So um, it's not shown on Yahoo Finance properly. Data's wrong there. Oh, good. Well, that will prevent me from making an unnecessary trip to Yahoo Finance then. So, uh, okay, I'll just go to the website. Denny Keaton showed up, says howdy. Oh, you're earlier this time. Usually you're like the first one on, but last time you were like the last one on, so... You're a lot earlier today. All right, so let me see if I can Google this website here for this YTSL. And then we'll get into the actual yield max funds. We had a really good week, by the way, for dividends and the total return of the fund. So, all right, I'm Googling. There's a site called Purpose Investments. We'll use that one. How's the sound, by the way? Is the sound any better? I'm trying to, trying to have the sound a bit better here. I kind of rotated things around under the computer. So, all right, let me pull this one up and then we'll do a screen share. And tell me if this is the right one. So, um, Cesar Rodriguez, never been able to catch you live. I drive a truck. Oh, well, good for you. Um, you're subscribed, I assume. I see like three new people on here. So welcome for all the new fans. Definitely subscribe. Our, our numbers are going up. We're up to like 1706 now. That's awesome. We may hit 2,000 within a month at the rate we're going. So welcome, all the new fans. James Storr, I want to be like Damon, 10,000 Tesla shares. Yeah, don't we all? God, what would that be? 10,000 Tesla shares with the 80-cent dividend? That's like $8,000 a month, isn't it? That's phenomenal. 8,000 a month. That's, um, yeah, six-figure income right there. So hold on a second. So I have a proposition for all of you all or a question on what you all would do because, you know, the channel is called Financial Coaching, which it's called that because I come on here so that you all can coach me. So uh, what I want you all to coach me on is if I was to sell a house for, say, like $400,000, just throwing an arbitrary number out there, um, and say I took all that money, I'd have to go somewhere else. I'd probably have to rent again. But say I took all that money and put it into like TSLY, did like a YOLO move. Do you all think that would be really dumb? I mean, I have 401ks and stuff too, so it wouldn't be like everything. But that would be, I mean, that would, it, it's very tempting. You know, like 400000 would buy, of course, I mean, I wouldn't net that. But it would buy, just just say $15, um, that'd be like 20000 a month in dividends. That would be very tempting. So if you all were in that situation, I just wonder what you all would do.
All right. Um, no, it was eight thousand because it was it's an eighty cent for it to be ten thousand. It would have to pay a dollar. Oh no, you're gonna taunt me on that one. Hey, I'm still holding, you know. But uh, yeah, thanks for the all caps there. Let's see. No, dude, don't sell it. Rent the house out. Take a mortgage on it. Then, well, the thing is, the house is starting to have like, you know, uh, it's it's not that old, but the, these houses, Lennar built the community, so it's um, they're not the best. You know, a lot of these builders cut corners. There's some issues with the house and stuff that I'd have to I'd have to put money into it if I was going to rent it. Um, I do kind of want to rent it, and I, I get what you're saying take a mortgage on it. I just don't like debt. That's the thing. If I have another mortgage, I have to work longer. That's the thing. And then buy YTSL with the mortgage. The math works out far better. That's what I'm doing. I just, the thing is, I don't like ha being saddled with those payments because um, it's, you know, you, you have to make that payment every month. So your income can't really fluctuate, which basically means you kind of have to work or have a lot of money coming in from somewhere else. Anyone building these on margin, the numbers make sense. That's what another channel does on here. Oh, you've been subscribed for a while. Well, good for you. Thank you. Glad to see you on. I guess you just haven't been able to make the live stream, but glad you're on now. Oh, if it's a problematic house, then forget what I said. Well, it's not that bad. Um, it just, I don't know, the water where I live, like I should probably put a water softener in because just the faucets and stuff. It's, it's like minor stuff, but you know, it is what it is. Um, anyway, back to this here Hoffman. So, um, Meta still has $40 of running room, right? So I was fine not selling. I'm going to obviously hold it now longer, but anyway, okay. Whatever you gave up to go all in on Tesla, you should just use the Tesla dividends for a few months to gain the money back into stocks. You want 20,000 at a time. Use the Tesla dividends for a few months to gain the money back. Oh, okay. Then you could just pocket monthly. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So just take the twenty thousand, and you're saying like, um, put it into stocks like other stocks that I like. That's good. That's good. Okay. So you all are coaching me. No, not all debt is bad. I know. I just kind of have that instilled in me. Um, I know debt can be very good for expanding a business and you know growing and whatnot. This is good debt since the payments are higher than the minimum monthly installment. Monthly minimum minimum monthly installment of what? Payments are higher than I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um I use margin. If your house is paid off, I would run a line of credit. Yeah, but that's a higher interest rate than than a mortgage. And everything's so much higher now. See, since inflation's kicked in, I almost kind of feel like an old person. You know, I feel like, oh my God, everything's like double the cost now. And I don't want to like I don't want to take out new loans and do anything. I just want to like kind of stay put, you know, just wait and see what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, a home equity line of credit, that would be higher than a mortgage running out of time. Well, I have till September 15th. I July, well, August 15th is really the last 30 days of, um, fate of decay, but I don't know why meta tanked the other day. I almost wore my space helmet, um, cause I'm not having sold it. I should have sold it Monday morning, but why, I don't know why it tanked though. I mean, if you look at the year to date chart, it's had just a really temporary pullback basically. And I presume it's going to come back. So we dropped down to 262. We came back a little bit, but today we were pretty much flat today. Um, the dividend payments are higher than the minimum. I have to pay back into the mortgage about double. Oh, okay. So you're still pocketing. So the dividends are paying the mortgage basically. So you're saying, but see, here's the thing. I would need the money out of the house to buy the funds, right? So you're saying basically take rent it and then take out a mortgage or take out a home equity line of credit. See, I would feel dumb because I just paid off a much lower and you all may think I'm dumb for doing this, but I paid off a much lower interest rate loan a year ago because I refinanced in 2020 
so I know I'm going into some of my personal business here, but I refinanced in 2020, but I just wanted that thing gone. I had some call options where I got called out of some stocks basically. And it was like a sign to me that it was time to just, you know, use the money, just get the thing paid off. Cause I honestly didn't know what was coming. Um, you know, I got a new job and stuff, but I didn't know. I, I wanted out of my old job really bad. And I was almost ready to just take a few months and get a lot of these side businesses going. And I didn't know that the job I have now was going to come through like it did. It was really like a godsend, you know, that it came through like it did. So, um, but yeah, so I'm still, still in the corporate world, you know, finished school and all of that. But at the time I was like, you know what, I just, I want to make a move because the way things were looking last summer with inflation kicking in and everything, I just, I wanted to um, get my expenses as low as possible. And if any of you follow Dave Ramsey, he always says that he's like very debt averse, which I kind of am too, probably to a fault. I'm kind of stubborn about it. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, yes, if you're going all in on Tesla, but are worried about your other holdings, if all if all in would pay you twenty thousand in dividends monthly, just don't drip for a few months and put those payments into the stocks you sold out of. Yeah, I know, I know. Keep on, keep on taunting me about it. I, I, I know. Um, I feel like I'm still going to be able to get out of it. Okay, though. It's going to 300, but you need earnings and September bump. So at this point, well, no, no, no. I'm going to be out of it before September for sure. Cause I need to be out of it like well before it expires. Cause the theta will kick in. So, and if you look at now the projections on Yahoo, are those projections on Yahoo? Um, is that like the consensus for what the experts project earnings to be? Cause if you look at it, we'll, I'll pull that up. But basically, and I know I'm supposed to look up some other fund on some website. I'm distracted again by all these great comments, of course. But on Yahoo, you'll see like the four quarters. You'll see the dots for the four quarters. Well, the next quarter for Meta is like way up here when the last one they came in here. So I don't see them coming all the way up here. It's going to be hard for them. Refinance. Why? It's much higher interest right now. Hulkman. You know, Tesla dividends are going to be all over the place. Yeah, typically, but it's a write-off. Well, if you can claim long form on your taxes, I can't. I have 600 shares of Tesla bought at 182. Nice. Uh, it was 165. Also sold six covered calls that I rolled up to 300. Tesla just keeps running. Oh, nice. So you sold covered calls and you rolled them up. I bought calls at like a stupid price that it's basically that one's pretty much worthless, but Probably should have bought more. I should have probably bought more of everything at the beginning of the year. But um, sometimes the best timing, sometimes you're kind of, uh, you know, sitting on your ass when you need to be taking action. All right, let's go to the site here first. Let's see. Tesla. Okay, so the person that wanted to know about this one, this is the site here. Tesla yield shares purpose ETF. Here's the 14% distribution. Well, that's a lot lower. We're at like 60% with yield max. So, um, but this one is up like 60% for the year. So, oh, so this is like a alternative, I guess, to yield max. Maybe they have a Berkshire yield shares purpose ETF and an Apple yield shares purpose also. Interesting. Maybe we'll get this person on too. So it says the purpose of this fund, maximize yield from holding Tesla shares by using covered call strategy and moderate leverage. Earn an attractive monthly yield from covered call strategy, approximately 50%, and moderate leverage, approximately 25%, while staying invested in Tesla shares. Participate in the long-term growth opportunity of Tesla shares. Stay protected from currency risk. Benefit from tax-efficient yield. Managed by Nick Merch, CFA, portfolio manager. No one, but <laughs> that's funny. CFA. Okay, so those yields don't impress me. They're not yield max yields, but it's I guess it's a more stable payout. Um, and the appreciation in the fund is pretty good. It's capturing, like the commenter said, it's capturing more of the upside of Tesla. All right, we've got 26 of you on. So let's see. What is this? This is funny. 
Who who are you talking about? Um, they still pay out better than most monthly dividends that are consistent. SVOL is a great one for dependable dividends. I agree. You're either Robert Kiyosaki or you're Dave Ramsey. You can't be both. That's that's the next thing I was going to say. Can't you be both? Invest for the future or create seven envelopes or eat ramen noodles and believe all debt is bad. Be like Robert. No, no, no. I don't believe all debt is bad and I won't eat ramen noodles. In fact, I'll tell you, one of my vices in life, I've never gone without like good food. Like even when I was struggling, I always ate out. I mean, not every day, but I that's something that I guess I was kind of spoiled on. I had to eat out a lot as a kid. So um, I, I'm like, I just can't go without that no matter what. So there will be no ramen noodles, no peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, none of that. Uh, I'll always eat good. That's like one of my vices. Like there's, there's a certain things that you can't do without, like for some people it might be alcohol or cigarettes or whatever, but for me it's eating out. But anyway, okay. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I've probably been too stubborn about debt. I actually finished school debt free, which is very rare. Could write a book on that, but went without a lot of experiences, you know, that other people had. But let me ask you this one. Here's a serious question for you. Um, are you better off with all those experiences and a bunch of debt or no debt and missing out on stuff? I don't know. It's like a tough one to say. But anyway, um, and that's a funny comment. I assume that's the uh, other fund we were just talking about. Look at its distributions, much more consistent. I bought in when it was at 20% yield. Oh, this it's dropping then. If it's 20%, it's at like 14% now. I guess that's, you know why? That's because the price of the fund is going up. So in a way, that's a good thing. Well, I'd never heard of this until you told me about it. So that's that's good. How much dollars do you need to start trading options on Tesla? I've never done it before, but would like to. I'll tell you exactly. We'll go to Yahoo. We'll, we'll pay a trip to Yahoo Finance right now. Um, the analysts. What? The, for earnings? Sam, if you want to sell Tesla options, you need at least 100 shares or have the... Oh, he's not asking about selling. He's saying trading options. So he could be saying buying or selling you might be a little advanced for him. He's looking to get started, I think. For selling, yes, you need 100 shares or the equivalent, you need a leap option, which controls 100 shares. So you can, your broker, your broker, that's what they call a poor man's covered call or poor man's covered put. Your broker will recognize a leap option, meaning a year or more out. They'll recognize it as you holding the shares. But you want to be careful with that because if you ever happen to get called out of, of that, you're going to be uh, up the creek without a paddle or you're going to be caught with your pants down. Uh, you're going to have to basically have the money in your account to be able to cover those shares. So be careful. That can get dangerous. It can get like playing with fire. You want to keep rolling those out. You never want those to get to expiration. But as far as to trade options, all you need to be able to do is have enough money to buy one contract. I'll pull up an example for you in Yahoo Finance. We'll do, we'll do a workshop here. Um, Chief T agrees about being debt free. And I have to admire his comment because he said I was cool. So, you know, I have to more or less agree. But I do, I do kind of lean. Um, and that's what Dave Ramsey says too. He, 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 Dave Ramsey actually says that it's like a. He he has a pretty profound analogy. He says that when you're debt free, like you feel the debt leaving your body, like something changes metaphysically. I didn't quite feel that myself, but. It is nice to be debt free. What's this? No, but he is funny too. Watch the I'm too cool for New York series he's doing now. Who who is that? Who are you talking about? Enjoying the channel but gotta run. Cheers. Well, thank you. I uh, hope you're subscribed. Uh you know, we're getting a lot of influx of new viewers, so that's always good. So, you know, welcome. Hope you'll stick around for a while. Uh and yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. But I know you gotta run today, so thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, clarify here what you're talking about here. Too cool for new. Oh, oh, really? Oh, he's anti New York. Really? Well, that's a bummer. New York, especially upstate is a great, great area. I've gotten, I've made a lot of friends from there. So I don't know so much about the city. I mean, it used to be a great, great state, but the city's kind of crazy. And I think most, most people, you know, agree with that. 
But anyway, how dare he cast shade on New York, right? Um, oh, he's in New York playing basketball. What's he doing there? Like he's, he's on vacation or does he like know someone there? I don't really follow him. Thank you both. Just looking to make some extra money as it runs up. I like how we use the abbreviation. So are you, um, I, I assume we share an audience at this point. Um, I've actually, I looked at one video. I'm trying not to go there too much, but some of you are kind of making me go there and take a look. And I see some of my fans comment there too. Like I've seen, I recognized about five or six names in the comment thread, but he's definitely getting more comments than me. So I don't know what he's doing. He's definitely growing faster than me at this point. So, um, That's funny. Well, you must spend a lot of time watching his channel. You're really studying a lot there. He's gone from just showing his iPhone to live shots of him. Is he any good at basketball? Maybe we'll have to do like a, um, <laughs> we should do like a competition or something like uh, whoever, what, what is it like? Uh, just set, uh, <laughs> whoever scores uh, the most points within a certain time frame, like has to invest a certain way or something. Okay, I'm just I'm just teasing you. You keep on hammering me about that call option, so the meta, so I have to have to tease you back, you know. Reviewing New York real estate. Oh, buy oh, that's what you want to do. Go buy expensive real estate in New York. That's exactly what you want to do, right? Um anyway. Okay. Too funny. Okay, uh what was I gonna do? Oh, Yahoo Finance. All right. Let's see here. By the way, what's going on with all these fires that are coming from Canada? Are they still engulfing the whole state? Because I'm, I'm getting all these in, in my feed. I'm getting all these like crazy looking pictures. I saved some of them from yesterday. This one, this is City Field where the Mets play. And it looks crazy, like almost apocalyptic. This is the city. This is the new World Trade Center. And you can barely see because it's all hazy. That one's kind of eerie. That's the Empire State Building. Um, let me try to get it so you can see. Yeah, that was the Empire State Building with the sun. And it almost looks like an eclipse because it's so hazy. And uh, yeah, it does. That's spot on there, Hoffman. It looks like Blade Runner 2049 in New York City. Very um, apocalyptic. This is the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, and it just really, I mean, it's picturesque, but eerie at the same time. The Brooklyn Bridge. So I guess the air quality is really low. Uh, there's some more of the um, Brooklyn Bridge again. And yeah, I just started saving some of these because they were popping up on my feed. And I was like, wow, that's nuts. Um, yeah, and I showed that with the Empire State Building there, that one. Yeah. So is it like all over the state? I mean, are you feeling it where you are? Let's see. It was yellow smoke everywhere here for over two days. Oh, you're in New York too. Are you in the city or like what part, what part are you? Yeah, we'll get focused back on this in a bit. We're kind of, we're talking about the, the wildfires that came from Canada to New York. So interesting. Maybe they got it under control. Um, Property tax here. Yeah, I was going to say you have, oh, upstate central. So like what part, like towards the east side? Like what, because uh, I, I actually, I've known a lot of people from upstate New York, so I'm just interested, you know, um, like what, you know, you don't have to say exactly, but like, you know, like east side, west side. I know you already said that up here. <laughs> um. Yeah, property tax. And you have like state and local tax too. So that's a bummer. Um, yeah, door gunner, we'll get on these. Um, wow, 54 years. Wow, so you've seen a lot of change there. Um, okay. Oh, I guess central. I can't think of anything like in the middle. Oh, cool, cool. That's good. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um, so what U UWI is walking into lobbies, looking around. It's hysterical. 
is he is he actually is he naturally funny like me i mean i have a natural sense of humor you know it's like one of those things you either have it or you don't like charisma you either have it or you don't some people it's just really forced and sometimes it's uh comically forced so i'll have to i guess i'll have to take a look i don't want to click too much in the algorithm all of a sudden it's like oh you know it starts pushing like both of our content you know anyway Okay, uh, Yahoo Finance, right? <laughs> That's funny. Unlike me, when you all listen to me, it, it, it energizes you, it wakes you up, it gets you motivated to invest. Okay, I keep getting distracted though. Yahoo Finance, here we come. And then we're going to go over an example um, option. Let me see, I lost my stream. I have like 50 tabs open here. Now, I know that that other channel does thumbnails better and um, you know, he has got some better editing and whatnot because I'm not really doing any editing on here. So I'm not sure if that's kind of holding back because I noticed the growth there is he's getting a lot more growth. So, you know, I don't know if it's the thumbnails or what, but you know what? The growth has accelerated here too. So, I mean, I'm doing okay. Can't complain. Can't complain. Like I said, I have the best fans on YouTube quality versus quantity, right? Okay, back to Yahoo Finance. Well, not back to, we weren't there in the first place. But okay, here we go. So what we're going to do here for Sam Talks Finance, we're going to go to Tesla, and we'll go over an example option here. So let's see here. How's the sound, by the way? Is, is the sound good? Running out of drinks here. Oh, wow. $9.54 in Tesla. Didn't really follow the market too close again today. Just kind of head down in my work. Um, okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go to the options tab and um, this should be easy to figure out. So obviously we're not going to pick one that expires next week unless you were selling. Now, Here's something you could do if you had the uh, poor man's covered call or if you had the 100 shares of Tesla. Um, if you were to, to sell to collect premium, uh, let's see, what are we at right now? We're at two something, 245 approximately. Now, earnings, here's the thing, July, I may, I may trade some options in Tesla. I'm glad you guys brought this up because now I'm going to be thinking about Tesla again. So earnings, and this is what I was talking about earlier. You see the circle here? You see the empty circle? So it hasn't reported. This one here that looks like an exact bullseye was actually oversold. If you remember, that's what caused our Tesla positions to drop because the street, you know, just freaked out that they just barely met earnings instead of exceeding earnings. So, and then here, because it's lower, and this is what I was saying. Is this just Yahoo's projection or is this the, consi the consensus estimate? Because the estimate is well below where they were last time. And my thought process, they met earnings last time and this threshold is lower. So they should easily exceed earnings is what I'm thinking. So, yeah. So it might be good to buy some call options there, scoop them up. Of course look at the fundamentals and whatnot. But if you were selling for premium, you would get something, you could basically gamble on Tesla. Oh, wow. Um, how about that? Okay, so you could basically gamble on, say, Tesla going to, well, there's not much premium to be had here. See, it's tricky. Uh, the closer you are to being in the money, the more premium you're going to get because it's a combination of how far in or out of the money you are and the time left. So you're collecting like you're basically collecting time decay with some of these. So you probably want to leave this one alone because there's not much premium to be had. OK, and then. Let's see. So what I would do um, if I was to go out, say, to September 15th. That's kind of a, you know, one of our dates that well that i use for yeah i have several positions that expire september 15th so if you were to go here and you were to get one for like say 300 or so 
if you were to buy one at 350 you would pay $525 for it. And what you would be doing, you would be hoping, and see, this is like free coaching here. So keep in mind that super chat feature, of course. But um, what, what I would do on this is um, I would, if I was to get one of these contracts, the, the whole idea, the whole money-making concept behind this is that you're thinking that the stock is going to go closer to 350 So as it does, this 525 times 100 or 525 is then going to go higher. So the closer you get, or even if you pass it, you you basically have 100 times uh, the, the, the shares. Instead of just owning one share of Tesla, you control 100 shares. So there's much more like leverage and opportunity to make money. So if you were to get to 350, then this 525 could become a thousand. So you could make like $500 off of that one contract, you know? So that's kind of how that works. Hopefully, hopefully that made sense, but that's what you would pay. So for any of these, what you would do, you would take these and basically multiply them by a hundred because it's a hundred, a hundred, one contract controls a hundred shares. That's how you calculate the price of options. And don't ask me how, like when you see this one here, see one of them's 423, but then you go up to 370, it's 568. That doesn't make sense. And then see 377, then 583, then 340, then 574. Don't ask me how that works. But anyway, um, so that's that. Hopefully that made some sense there. And hopefully it makes you some sense as in dollars and cents. Now let's circle back to the comments here. And let's see. Uh, okay, got a bunch of them. Okay, let's see here. Um, Walking in lobbies and office buildings and looking at the landscaping, deciding to invest in New York REITs or not, it is funny. Well, that's what you call production value. Like if you're in the film industry, you know, you take advantage of a trip that you're on. So obviously he's in New York for some reason. I've done that before too. If you guys go back about a year ago when I was visiting the mountains, my cousin that lives in Northern California, we went to Mount Shasta and I filmed videos from there. So the production value was great, but it didn't necessarily help the views. So, um, you know. Of course, me just standing here, you know, in the, in the kitchen like this, I'm getting better views. But I do see some good points that you all have made here. But hopefully, what I lack in production value, I make up for in charisma and humor, you know. So, um, and at the the point, like I was mentioning, I read this, but I have this up on the screen now. He's getting growth because his videos are quick and to the point, very focused. He just lacks a good spreadsheet. Oh, well, we had that on here. Um, we had the one uh, that I was using the Google sheet, but. I go for a while. That's the thing. See, because you all with your comments and stuff, every everything I do is live on here. And I have so much fun chatting with all of you all. And I put your comments up. So I end up going easily over 30 minutes, you know. So sound is great. Awesome. Thank you there for the sound check. Uh, you better scoop up some shares before you end up paying 2000 Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's well, or get some leap options, right? Check the earnings date. July 18th, right? Um, Damon Rodell, I would coach on selling options, not buying them. The time decay on low, low delta, high IV will make you rich. Do you, so you think it's better to sell than buy? Because I've made some considerable money buying options too, like the calls. That's just my first, that's like my favorite strategy. That was when it came to buying options, call options were like my first, so to speak. So that's, you know, it's almost like a drug or something else. Um, you know, the, the first thing you did always stands out in your mind, so to speak. Anyway, okay. So, but selling, certainly, I've been burned more selling them because I've had to roll them and whatnot and taken losses. But I probably don't know what I'm doing as well. Sell a put at 200 and sell a call at 350, short strangle, collect the premium. A uh, great idea. Yeah, that sounds really good. May actually do that. Sell a put at 200, sell a call at 350. But then you have to have a leap to be able to do that, right? You have to have at least a leap option to control 100 shares, right? I really appreciate the walkthrough. I'll check out some moves on Monday. Oh, good. Hope you make a million bucks. Um, Hoffman, amen. I don't have 100 shares yet. Uh, his whole system works because he gets 5% margin interest. Without that low rate, his system falls apart. How is he getting such a low rate? Is it because of his broker or is it because of the time he started? Did he get in at, like before rates went up? No, you can enter it as a strangle. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Really good to know.
Okay, so now I guess we can go over the yield max funds that we were actually going to talk about to begin with. And so do you all vote for like longer or shorter videos? Because these run a while. I started doing this a couple months ago because it's helped my watch hours. And like I say, it's easy just to ramble on and on. But I guess I could go shorter. It's kind of hard to do a 10-minute video and get the comments and whatnot. But maybe I could try for under 30 at some point. Uh, interactive Brokers gives you margin at 5.5%. Oh, okay. Good to know. I think they still have $200 of mine. Have to learn all this in Robinhood. I like Ameritrade a lot, too. And hopefully, I think the consensus so far from all of you is that they're not going to change much as they migrate to Schwab since Schwab has taken them over. So, okay, now let's look at the three yield max funds and how they did this week. Okay. So, Tesla, first, our favorite, right off the bat. All right, we're up to 15.83. We're flirting with $16 a share. 15.88 in the after hours. So this week, we um, well, we've been on a tear really since May 24th. 14.26. So we're up like a dollar sixty almost. A dollar fifty-seven since May 24th. So we're really on a tear, and then we had that 80 cent dividend which is awesome. So doing pretty good there. NVDY. NVDY is uh, 2270. Oh, look at this. 2373 in the after hours. But I think the dividend disappointed. No, it didn't. It was like 70 cents, I think, wasn't it? So since May 24th, we're up uh, $2.13. If we look at um, historical data, and then go to dividends. There's our 74.6 cent dividend here. All right. And then um, Appley. I guess I can look at OARK too. Okay. So Appley, that, this dividend is the one that really disappointed us. 21.59 up to 22 even in the after hours. Now Apple stock since the beginning of the year is on a nice uh, recovery too. So let's see here. Um, okay, since May the 24th, uh, not, not as much. We're not up a dollar, but we're still up. We got our first dividend, um, same day as the other ones, June 7th, right? This week went by fast. Yeah, 28.8 cents, so this one wasn't as good. Um, and then OARK was our first one, OARK. And we'll try to get Jay back on um, maybe next week or before the end of the month. So let's see here. Okay, um, this one, I don't look at this one as much, not too much, but um, I'd probably get into, I don't know if I'd get into NVDY or Appley. I, I may just keep buying Tesla. Um, but this one, so since the 25th, 24th is here, right? Let's see. No, this is the 25th. Hmm. Um, well, we had a little dip here, so we're up not quite a dollar. The dividend was, let's see, 51 cents, so kind of middle of the road. Okay, so that's how we did there. I hope Meta recovers by next week so I can get out of those, of course. And uh, let's see. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, Robinhood's pretty cheap too, maybe less than 5%. Didn't move much with Tesla spike today. Must have blown through the strike. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Um, James, haha, not smarter, just focused. Only sell puts on companies that you think have potential to go up and have earnings. Never sell around earnings. I've heard that, but it's tempting. Jason Marshall, looks like you're new. Have you subscribed? If you haven't, please do. I saw a video where he said he negotiated the margin rate down a couple times. Interesting. Okay. So another fan from the other channel. If you bought Tesla on January 1st, you'd be up 79% total. I know. They're on a tear since the beginning of the year. 
do you, you want to be, let's see, what is this? Come on. Do you want to be a new money high? What? Come on. Do you want to be a new money high on Apple and NVDY? Sure, why not? Sold 30 wall puts today. September expiration, 45 cents per contract, $15 strike. Collected 13.50. I don't see wall. Is that Walgreens or Walmart? No, Walmart's WMT. Don't see wall going below 15 anytime soon. Okay, let's see. Let's see here what you're talking about. Um, w A L. Western Alliance Bank Corporation. A 3.64% dividend yield. Oh, we fell off the cliff. This is one of the banking stocks. So you're thinking they're going to rebound or you're doing, what do you, oh, you sold puts. So you're thinking they're going to smash through earnings, I take it. September expiration, 45 cents per contract, $15 strike. God, you all make me feel like I don't know options at all. <laughs> Definitely need to do more. Um, yeah, isn't he? <laughs> He definitely knows what he's doing. My new name is Top Tick THB. Why is that? Tell me why that is. Is that because I um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure there. Is that does that have to do with like buying call options or something? Let's see. Already subscribed. Just don't catch the live feed often. Oh well, that's like three of you that have said that. So you're um. Oh. Buy at the high. No, I try to buy at the lows. What have I bought at the highs? I, I might have bought Tesla too high, but it paid off at this point because, I mean, it's back up. You know, I'm, I'm well into the green now. So um, I'll have to review this one again here. I want to try to wrap my head around this one. So you sold 30 puts today, September expiration, 45 cents per contract, $15 strike, collected 13.50. Okay, nice. Uh, I don't see wall going below 15 anytime soon. Sweet. And if it does, you get in even cheaper. So you collect that um, and you just have to hold it or roll it by September. So that's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Buy at the high. Um, yep. Regional banks have high implied volatility right now. Go get it. Oh, that reminds me. I've got to, where can I look up implied volatility? Because I've had, you know, KJK good. He keeps asking about that. And I want to show that for him. So where can we find that? Apply and NVDY. So I need a good site here to find um, implied volatility. Or at least imply that I know where it is. Because it's not coming up on Yahoo. So, all right. Let me stop the share here for a second. And then, let's see. I'm going to find something here. Okay, here's a spotgamma.com website. Introducing SIV. Uh, it's not, this is not something I want to buy or sign up for. Ooh, we got statistical analysis here. I don't want to sign up for this. I just want the information displayed to me. Uh, dang, is it that hard to find? Well, here's the thing. I know where to find it on options. Hold on a second. You're bored. How can you be bored on here? We're much funnier than UWI. We've already established this. I could come up with some funny story. Well, not come up. I have plenty of funny stories. I don't need to come up with any. Hoffman is the teacher's pet. I know, and he hasn't even super chatted me. Unreal. I'm going to need... Uh, if, if my uh, meta option goes down, I'm going to need some, I need to start like a GoFund the coach uh, site or something. I did, um, I did Google it and those sites came up, but I, I just remembered on Yahoo, I can go to an option on, I can go, I can go to an option chain and I can look at the implied volatility. Um, thanks for showing up, by the way, uh, Cash Hawkins. Bring up the option train. It should be listed. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. Um nothing wrong. Good job. Okay. All right. You know, I just, I just remembered that it's been a little while, but, um, let me, let me go back there. Cause I do remember that from the, um, option chain. Okay. 
because I, I used to see that. I'm, I'm thinking for some reason, like, I'm forgetting, you know, applying it to the options. I don't know why, but all right, let's just go to Tesla again. I should have done that while I was on the chain. All right, Tesla. If I ever go to New York, I'll do some funny stuff there and put it on, put it on the channel. How about that? Okay. All right, let me share the screen here again. We'll go over this and then huh. think or swim. Yeah, well, the thing is, I can't display think or swim on here since I stopped using Zoom. Um, it doesn't let me, it only lets me, the StreamYard only works like in the browser that it's linked to, like, like Chrome. So, all right, I'm going to go back to Yahoo here and uh, screen share. And let's pull this up. Anybody watching the NBA Finals? I'm not too into it. I know the Miami Heat are in. Um, it started already. I'm much more into hockey. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Options chain. I do remember this now. Okay. Come on. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, duh. I don't know why I forgot that. Implied volatility on the options chain is over here. So anytime you want to look for any of them, if you want to go to like, now why did that? Okay, there we go. Come on. Some of them say zero, which is confusing. Like, you'll look here. Some of them in the middle, you'll see like after three of them here, you got zero, three more than zero, zero, zero then. So it can kind of be confusing, but... You want to go out, like for any of them, you can look and see for like, say, September, here we go, September 15th. Let's look here. See, here's the implied volatility here. So that's where you find it. So KJK Good, if you watch this all the way to the end, which I presume you will, uh, you'll see that. Very easy. I don't know why I forgot that. But anyway, okay, everyone. Um, do we want to, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I could use web-based TOS, but I feel like it's not as good. I'll look at it again and see. But anyway, okay, everyone, good session. Uh, anything else anyone uh, discuss here? If not, we'll probably go ahead and end it there. Oh, we got a couple more uh, comments that come in here. You, all, you guys always do this to me. <laughs> NVDA, NVDA scares the crap out of me. I'm only selling and rolling two contracts at 275 every week and collecting about a thousand a week on them. My trading partner is all in and killing it. I'm more cautious. Where do you trade? Like, are you in like a trading group? Like, who's your trading partner? How does that work? Man, I'm really missing out on this. A thousand dollars a week. How long have you been uh, doing that? A thousand dollars a week is living income. Like I say, that's awesome. Okay. Um, well, good for you, Damon. You're definitely an option trading pro. Let me know if you're in some kind of a trading group or anything, because I am, but I'm not seeing your level of success. How long have you been doing options, by the way? Okay, please ask Jay next time, what are his lowest estimates for TSLY? When volatility is very low, that would also go for all the funds. If he thinks they will never go below 10%, then I'm in like Flynn. I'll try to remember all these. I really need my secretary my appointed secretary to uh, keep track of all these questions for me. Okay. Hello. At me. Okay. Yeah. Damon should like teach his own course. You should come on here, Damon. We should do like an options workshop. What do you think? I know Danaher's in the tank. So like I said, that one's worked out for me a bunch, but it's like anything else. It works until it doesn't. I don't know. Where is Varden? He's he's missing. MIA. I'm, I'm surprised he's not on here. Um, I don't think he's a basketball fan, but the hockey game's not on until tomorrow, I think. Anyway, oh, Tatiana. I knew you would say something like this. Um, I got to pull this up here. Um, why is this running so slow? Instead of a GoFundMe, you should try it. You mean OnlyFans. I, I know what you mean. See, I, I know what you mean. Um, it would be GoFund the coach. Yeah, I've thought about doing an OnlyFans page. I'm sure you would subscribe for that in a heartbeat, right? I think Charlie Munger has an OnlyFans too. Are you like one of his number one fans on there? I know you and Join Jen were kind of at a tug of war uh, for uh, 
you know, courting Mr. Munger there. <laughs> that was a funny discussion. A rich old dude. But anyway, yeah, um, definitely. Um, I, I, I could certainly look into that there. Um, and uh, I'm sure you would you would definitely sign up for that. <laughs> Only fans of the coach. Damon should start a group for us all. You know, no, he could just be part of this group in Discord. Let's let's get that going. What do you think, Damon? Let's partner up. I could be your trading partner too. What do you think? Virtual handshake on it. Virtual handshake. So let's get something going here. Because I, you know, I know a lot, but you're like the expert. So we need to build this community out and let's let's get it going. Been doing options for about six years. I learn every day what I don't know. You know, the funny thing, I learned it in finance classes, but I, it didn't click for me. <laughs> oh, look who showed up. I knew if we talked about her, she would show up. So um, Join Jen was late because she was actually on Charlie Munger's OnlyFans page, I think. That's why she was running late. <laughs> that was funny the other day when we were having that discussion. Munger's not my type, but you said you wanted to marry him the other day. You and you and Tatiana, both of you, <laughs> just having fun, you know. See, you all can't get this on other channels. Like that other, that boring guy, he's not going to talk about all this stuff. Anyway, you know, Tatiana was just suggesting that I should have an OnlyFans page. So um, what's this here? Stocks in socks. What is, uh, is that like a channel name or what? See, I like this because most finance channels don't get, uh, they don't get like a female audience. So I have a female audience. Like it's 80, 20, I think usually it's like 90, 95% male, but it's good to have like a, you know, co-ed, co-ed channel. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's silly time now. It's after 10 o'clock, you know, it's on the East coast here. It's, it's silly time for sure. Uh Oh, <laughs> what is... oh my God. You said. I'll do Charlie. Everything is for sale. Well, he's got money, you know, so I'm sure there's people in line. It's like, I, I forget who the old man was that he had the young, really young. Uh, she was like a playboy model or someone. Uh, was it? Um, I can't remember. I think, she, I think she overdosed or something. Was it, was it Anna Nicole Smith? Like in the nineties with some old man. Was it like Hugh Hefner? I, I can't remember, but it was clear that she was with him because he, he was old. And he had money, but she was telling everybody how she in love. She was in love with him, basically. And the natural reaction was like, "Yeah, right. She's just with him for money," you know. So um, I would marry Munger only because he's a billionaire. Guy is super nerd and ancient. I he's old. I think the only one that looks older than him, if you guys are into Star Wars, is uh, Emperor Palpatine. He's uh, the only older one. By the way, that would be fun, you know, because I'm, I, I'm. A big Star Wars fan on the side, not as much of a fan of the new stuff, but there's a channel on here that does the Emperor spot on, and it would be fun to have somebody like that on as a guest, you know, to kind of go outside of the finance um, finance niche, you know, um, that would be fun. Oh, look who it is! You keep changing your name. You've changed your name like six times. Now you're Brevis, like Beavis, Beavis and Butthead. You keep changing your name. I'm looking at taking some coffee can money, coffee can money. Oh, you store money in coffee cans. So you're like we were talking about earlier, um, like with the, the debt averse. What did you do, I'm wondering, career-wise? Like, so you're retired, but um, you seem like you're loaded. So I'm just kind of wondering. I mean, that's good. Like most of my fans, like uh, what's his name? Who's not on here, by the way, Rob Smith. You all did really well, managed your money well, and now you're, you know, you're, you're really rolling you know, as far as investing. So coffee can money, buying some NVLA and S-O-U-N. I think they may be the next hundred baggers. Interesting. Did you buy that book, by the way? Now, just as long as it's not Mullen, for some reason, Mullen is such a trending stock, but I think it's garbage. Okay, NVLA, Movella Holdings, Inc. Never heard of this one. And like I say, if I've never heard of it, it can't be any good. You know, that's my litmus test. S O U N Soundhound AI. You know what? It's so funny. These are on my list, I think. Wait, well, no, they're not. No, they're not. I've got to I've got to do the plus sign. Yeah, I've got to do the um plus sign here. S O U N three dollars. So you think why do you think these are gonna be the next um 
next um, 100 baggers? You'll have to tell me. MVLA, let's see here. Movella Holdings, 265. Okay, well, I'll add these to the list too. Now there's probably a thousand of them on. I've got to make time to actually sit and look at all this stuff, you know, actually do research. So, <laughs> Tatiana, I'm driving, had to pull over. <laughs> we have fun on this channel, you know, and you all make it fun. Bought another 100 shares of Tesla today. Well, good for you. It's starting to run up now. <laughs> you are funny, Tatiana. You you cracked me up. Jen can marry Mumber. I'll be his side chick. Yeah, he probably has many, many uh, on the side. And not because of his look. You know what'll be funny when he's like in a, in a wheelchair and he's got some young woman like wheeling him around. And she tells everybody how in love she is with him. And he's like, keep wheeling me. Keep on. Hey, you know, I got to get I, I got to get to the annual meeting. I'm going to I'm going to run late. You know, <laughs> there you go. Third wheel. Exactly. The wheel strategy. Right. Isn't that like the wheel strategy or an alternative for it? You options traders should know that. <laughs> Hoffman has um, some really uh, what they call punny humor. These aren't the ch chats I'm looking for. Move along like the, the force joke in Star Wars. Like uh, these aren't the droids you're looking for. It's okay. We got to have fun on here. Audience retention. So, all right. <laughs> you can't find this on other finance channels, you know. All right. Where are we here? Well, most of you are laughing. All right. I'm not retired. Well, yeah, you're like a full-time trader, but you still work. I wonder what you do for work. You want to move to Florida? We could be buds. Yeah, I'd be all for that. Let's. I, I want to meet some of you all. We should have like a group, have drinks and whatnot. You know, we can have the financial coaching group. MVLA and SOUN supply to Tesla. Oh, okay. You would see that like on the Bloomberg terminal or I don't know where else. Where do you see that? There's like a way you can see all these companies that supply. Like I had found that like with Apple. I can see why people spend winter in Florida. I did from December to March and it was great. Yeah, we do have great weather like six months out of the year. And honestly, six months out of the year, you almost don't even have to run your air because it gets cool enough at night. Like just open the windows and you really don't even need heat. Now, around Christmas time, we had the coldest Christmas we've had on record. I mean, it was like in the teens. So we did have to run heat for the, for the holidays. Um, but normally you don't even have to run your heater. But the summers, of course, are, are brutal. And we're starting to get to that time. I see why, like they say, snowbirds, you know, they go back, they come for six months and then they go back to like their home state. I could see wanting to leave the state for like six months. I mean, because, well, we have longer days, you know, with the time change and whatnot, it stays light. In fact, it just got dark like an hour ago, but it stays light till almost nine o'clock, you know? So it's, it's very nice here, especially in this area. Um, but yeah, usually... From probably like November even to April, we have great weather. Interesting. Like I said, silly money, coffee can stocks, buy them and forget about them. I have my coffee money here, actually, right next to the little space helmets over here. But this is my, I'll, I'll keep my coffee coins here. I've got to have water money too to get like uh, these gallons of water from the vending machine at the store because the water is so, uh, we have such hard water here. Buy and forget. That's always uh, the idea. Buy and forget. Okay, let's see. I'm kind of behind on comments here. Well, you all have kept me on. I was going to end this like 30 minutes ago, but you all have kept me on a long time here. Oh, you all are funny. Okay, interesting. Like I said, oh, I read that one. Um, all stock talk stops when the girls show up. Yeah, I mean, some people think that the ladies just aren't um, as focused on the stocks and the numbers, but it's entertaining. You know, I'm all about the entertainment, you know. So, um, yeah, Denny Keaton liked that one. Love me some wheel. It's the wheel strategy. Like I say, uh, Charlie Munger, he's running the wheel strategy, I'm sure. One of them's going to end up giving them a heart attack, though. Hopefully they have a good life insurance policy on him. One of these ladies is going to give that poor old man a heart attack. <laughs> we 
women need to learn to invest and make their own dollars. I agree. Uh, yes, I am. How did you guess? I probably said so, right? Oh, look, Andre Viao, the home inspector. It will be difficult because we have, uh, oh, kilometers. That's what you use in Canada. 1642 miles between you and me. Well, you could just fly down here, fly down here for a hockey game or something. Watch one of your Canadian teams lose to the lightning. You know, I mean, it, it would be easy. A lot of people come down here to Florida. <laughs> Talk about margin. It gets me hot. <laughs> Not necessarily what we're trying to do here, but, um, you know, we're just having fun. So anyway, all right, I'm caught up on the comments here. So do you all at least know where implied volatility is now? It's, it's there on Yahoo, like I showed you all. Um, and then we're getting an ad for a SeaWorld pass, $15 a month. Um, yeah, you're right, Join Jen. Yeah, you listen well. Yeah, I, I have said, yeah, Tampa a few months ago, the Tampa area. Uh-oh, you know what joke I'm going to make here. My wide, what is she, um, kind of wide? <laughs> you, you anticipated what I was going to say. <laughs> that's funny. She isn't wide. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. Prefer TP Buccaneers. You mean Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, because they're not hockey and there's no Canadian uh, NFL teams. Not yet. Anyway, they talked about moving the bills to Toronto, but that's probably not going to happen now because they're going to get a new stadium in Buffalo. But yeah, uh, I like the Bucks when they win. They're typically not our most winning team, but we had Tom Brady as our quarterback. So that's why my book, The THB Method, I was kind of going for like, you know, Tom Brady's got the TB12 method. I'm not quite as famous as him, not yet anyway, but that would kind of be the idea, the THB method when it comes to investing. But I've got some other ideas. I might call it uh, brewing great returns or crafting great returns with the THB method or something like that. I'm not quite decided yet. I just want to get a book out there because I know some of you will buy it no matter what. And like they say, I need those tendies, print those tendies. Uh, I heard the Bucks are going to field a professional team this year. I wouldn't count on it. There's years they haven't. Like, what did their old coach say? Um, there was some joke. They, they said, coach, what did you think about your team's execution? He said, I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, I missed a comment up here. I think we had a Rob Smith sighting. Let's see here. Rob Smith said, my wife tells me to stop talking about Tesla stock. She hates me talking about the stock market. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our chat uh, kind of our chat kind of detoured a little bit here because some of the ladies showed up here. And just in case you haven't figured out yet or in case you did, you missed it, um, two of our women in the audience have the hots for Charlie Munger. And um, they're like fighting over which one's going to get to like possibly marry him one day. And um, so we had some jokes going on and whatnot. And basically we were saying whoever uh, doesn't marry him or whoever comes in second place will just have to be the side chick, basically. So that's what we were talking about there. So things kind of detoured a little bit, but we're back on to, you know, talking investments and whatnot. So, all right. Yeah. So I think we're caught up there. Uh, let's see here. My wife never hears what I'm saying about money until she needs some. <laughs> But my house is spotless. We're a winning team. Yeah, I need I need uh, someone to clean for me, too. Not that that's something that, you know, women exclusively do, but it would be nice to have that, certainly. Um, and then, yeah, we address this one. The bucks, you know, how about those bucks? Made 4845 profit with Tesla today. Looking forward to buying again, waiting for a pullback. How much did you buy, I wonder? Okay, guys, I got to go. Need to repair some equipment. Well, uh, I'm definitely going to take you up on that offer. I want to, we need to do like an options group or a chat or something. That would be cool. I need a good trading partner. So your house can be spotless with a good housekeeper. I agree. I agree. Maybe I can hire one of you all. By the way, I also have the hots for Munger. <laughs> God, well, with his money, I guess. It's it's more, it's the money. It's not so much the person. You know, like when they say, I don't understand what so-and-so sees and so-and-so. It's not always the look. Sometimes it's the spirit. Sometimes it's the personality. 
But let's be honest, sometimes it's the money, right? And with Munger, that's what it would be, you know? But, you know, it's funny because that doesn't seem, between him and Buffett, it doesn't seem like an equitable partnership because Buffett's got like $115 billion, which has grown because I just looked it up the other day. So he's got like $115 billion. Munger's only got like $2.5 billion. So Munger's like in the poorhouse compared to Buffett. But anyway, that's um, interesting stuff there. So Munger definitely has a long uh, line of people uh, lined up for him. So no judgment there from me. Peace. All right. Andre Vial, Rob Smith, we have similar wives. She hates talking about money and trading. Uh, that's usually my, my favorite too, because I notice a lot of the women in my life don't like talking money. They want you to make it. But I tell you what, if, if you help them with something and it's down, like that, they notice. They don't notice when stuff is up. But the moment it's down, what happened? I thought you were a good investor. What happened? You know, it's like that. That's that's what that's what I get. But it's like, well, you must not have been paying attention all the all these times that all these funds were up, all the money you've made. But it is true. I hear that a lot. I hear people say, and you know, women say that too. I'm not trying to be um, one sided or anything like that. Just being objective, but. You know, I do hear people say, I don't want to think about money. I just want to know that I'm okay. I just want the accounts to grow, but I don't want to talk about it and think about it. So, yeah. Anyway, all right. Fun stuff. <laughs> I told her that Tesla stock paid her $200 hairstyle she got today. <laughs> Charlie is, he is a chick magnet. You know, he should be like the wingman at the at the bar. Like he he should, he should like teach a class for sure. <laughs> Oh, uh, you all are funny. I have the lukewarms for Charlie Munger. Is there, I knew you would show up. Is there an update on Tesla IV? Look at your screen, dude. It's like right here. We went over it. I knew you would show up. But um, if you look at the options chain on Yahoo, right side of the chain, it has the implied volatility right there. And I don't know why I forgot that because I used to definitely know that's where it was. So anyway, okay. What else do we got here? Um... <clears throat> Tesla might pull back at 257. You think so? Is, is that, are you doing that thing called technical analysis? Munger and Buffett pick well and hold forever. It's true. Buffett is interesting because he's a billionaire. If he was an Omaha truck driver, he would not be. That's true. Yeah. LOL, you, you know women. Well, well, I'm glad you all are taking jokes well. You know, I've got a good, good audience here. So Robert Smith. Yeah, that's funny. Um, you guys will see join Jen is into money. And so is Tatiana. You know, the women on this channel are into money, which is cool. You know, so that's, that's good. We need more, like they say, women in finance, women in money, in, into money, so to speak. So, um, all right. Well, all right. That was a fun session. You all, we hit like 33 viewers at our peak. So, um, let's see. I'm probably going to end it there. Thank you all for tuning in, like comment and subscribe, and we'll see you all on the flip side. Take care.